on this channel we've shared a lot of engine builds from the ground up from like from start to finish but also we also realized that we didn't really we haven't really shared details on crank assembly or on checking out the crank assembling it it's from from a d16 even a b18c type r so we're going to show you that all here on how we approach it and of course the crankshaft is actually the backbone of a good performing build so this is not to be overlooked because this is what makes good power or would actually decide if it will make good power or not so yep this one is for you Here's an ITR crank, a B18C crank. We checked it, we measured, everything checks out. So we had it lightly micro polished. This way it's gonna be really good and spins freely. This way it's gonna be able to support good power. And of course, here's the D16A6 or D16A6 block, and of course the single overhead cam crank. We also checked it and it was good. So we had it lightly micro polished. And this way it's gonna be smooth like butter and of course instead of showing our tools like the micrometer and dial bore gauge what you can do is going to be easier is also double check it with the plastic gauge and we have a video about checking plastic gauge or checking it via plastic gauge you can check it it's going to be on the link below this way after you check it then you can decide if you're going to have it micro polished or not and of course proceed on the build all right so let's continue now here is the B18C Type R block. It's all cleaned up and all that. So it's actually resurfaced and honed. And here's the PH16, which is a D16A6. So it's locally stamped as PH16. Okay, we turn this. Yes, and you can see the main girdle, or sorry, sorry, sorry. The main saddles are all clean. And even here on the single overhead cam, yes. Now it's ready to be assembled. Okay, now let's go to the crank here the idr crank and the oem taiho main bearing is ready all right we will wipe this clean get the mains installed properly and snug okay there you go all right now we're gonna oil this with regular 30 weight oil yes sir yes sir so clean we're gonna use 30 weight oil just to show, show you guys but of course when we do the final assembly we're gonna use assembly loop so here it is a 30 weight oil. We can oil it up really good. This way we can show you how the crank turns well with you know with just simple assembly like this. And of course, because the crank is all also micro polished. Alright. Okay, now we drop in the crank. Yes, and then side thrust. Okay, glue side out, oil it, and then the caps. Alright. Then hand tight it, keep it snug and good. Of course, one more. Then now, cap one and five is 18 feet pounds torque. So we could start with that. There you go. Okay, and then the last one. Okay, and then the center main caps, the two, three, four is 22 feet pounds torque. So move that to 22. We'll explain this a little later. It sounds good. All right. Okay. Almost there. All right. Now we start with the center. It's fifty uh forty nine feet pounds torque. Sorry. Okay. That sounds really loud. We do the rest now with time lapse. Okay. And notice cap one and five is torqued just like a B16 or B20 at 56 feet pounds torque, but the main girdle is just 49 degrees. I mean, feet, right? Let's turn this now. Look, oh man, that turns really light and really good. Oh yeah. See that? This is how we like it because this means it's gonna be. 
turning freely so the piston is free to make all its power so now let's talk about this this and this one and five is torqued like a b20 because obviously a b16 and b20 doesn't have the main girdle like this one here this the i know some people would say that's why it's torqued 49 or lower on the center three mains because the crank flexes and all that maybe so but the thing that's more more important to see is that this aluminum main girdle expands when warm. So if you torque this at 56 and it's operating temperatures, that becomes a, a little too tight, right? Unlike the one in five does not have the girdle. So that's why the B20 and B16 is torqued on the mains at 56 because it doesn't have the main girdle. Whereas the B18 and the Type R has. So that's why it's 49 at the center. Okay, now here, let me show you around the block, around the back side here. On VTEC blocks, there's a black box here, which is, you know, for the positive crankcase ventilation. So that some people do plug this and put two vents here. This way it has a breather. That is also good. That's that's also what we do on the B20 VTEC because it doesn't have a PCV ventilation system. But on VTEC block, what we do is we, remain, we maintain this OEM this way on idle up to 50% throttle, it does its work on the streets, but on, you know, on higher throttle oper operations, this here acts as a proper breather on heavy load. So you get both best of the both worlds. So we don't plug this and run both. We run this and this all together. Of course, this part here, the OEM one goes back to the intake manifold for the vacuum and this goes to the catch can. This way it works really good. Now, a short bit on clearances and how it's important, not just for durability, but even performance. Like for example, here on the piston rings, and let's say when piston number one fires, all right, it pushes out. All those three, two, three, four, remain baggage, or they, they're just, you know, they, they hinder or they eat up horsepower because they're just dragging around. When piston number three fires, one, two, and four is actually excess baggage. So when you think about it, those people, especially locally, they like running two tight of rings. They even run oversized piston rings and file them off. Sure, maybe, just maybe you get the proper compression, but that is going to run really hard. I mean, really slow because it, the windage loss is huge. So the more important thing is check the boards if they're straight and if they're straight, have it honed and get the finish correct. And if you remember this, this had the 0 .00, I, sorry, this had the 0 .016 top ring gap. That's quite loose. And the second ring is we had to move it to 0 .018. But hey, it made 186 wheel horsepower on just ITR cams. That's a strong B16, right? Okay, now we're going to talk about the main bearing clearances of the B18 a little later. But now next is the D16A6. In here, we actually hand tight all the main main studs or main bolts onto the threads. This way, it oil the threads quite well. So we don't have to, like, you know, pour oil or whatever. So then I'm now going to remove it and wipe it clean. Get the main bearings, the brand new Taiho main bearings on. Yes. Okay, now let me show you. It's, got, it's looking clean. Oh yeah, brand new main bearings. Okay, now here, this is something that's uh, I actually want to talk about. But it's not really a trivia, but it's like information to share. The OEM main bearings, the first layer is actually quite soft, and Honda did that, or Taiho and Daido did that because this way, if there's some debris on the oil, it'll just embed on the bearing surfaces without harming the crank. That's why it lasts that long. And I know locally some people prefer ACL because it's stronger. Yeah, sure, it's stronger. But in what sense? You have to understand that the ACL and King race bearings, the surface is harder because it's for race use. But if there's dirt on the oil, it'll scratch your crank. That's why locally there's a lot of those, right? And what's the solution? Simple. Keep your oils clean. Change it frequently or occasionally. And a lot of people, especially the local, they're going to say, oh, it's just a street car. That's exactly my point. If it's a street car, make sure that it has oil, clean oil. Because obviously race cars, every time it goes out, it comes out with new oil after the dyno. So we're locally, when people say it's just a street car, it just tells me they're not willing to maintain the car properly. Because if it's a street car, they actually plan to neglect it. 
Okay, now we lube the main bearings with 30 weight oil. Just for test fitting right now, because obviously when we do the final assembly, we're going to be using assembly lube. And we're going to have a video for this whole engine and the B18C. Don't worry about that. We drop in the crank and then the thrust washers, groove side out. All right, then keep this main cap snug before we do the first step. Okay, there. Okay, now, first step is 18 feet pounds torque. You can hear the clicking sound, it's just addicting, you know? All right, there. Okay, now let's go a bit faster. Okay, this is all 18 feet pounds torque. This is in order for it to be all consistent when, when tightening it, not to bend the crank or whatnot. Okay, now second step is 38 feet pounds torque. We're gonna hear the clicking sound louder now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, now let's go faster. Well, time lapse, sorry. Okay. Now it's all done. Okay, now let's turn the crank. Let's see how it feels. Oh yeah, this one turns really good too. Okay. Yep, this both, this and the B18 is ready to make good power or good jam. All right, wait, let me turn the block. Let me show you something here. Let me talk about a few more things. Okay. It's more about the breather for the single overhead camera for the DC series. Because here at the back, you can see, it just have the factory PCV system. It doesn't have an extra fitting here, like the B20 or the B18. Let me show you. Unlike here, look, it has the factory, but it also has a plug where you can remove it and have extra fitting for the breather. So there's a dilemma there for the single overhead cam, but also because it doesn't re rev that high, so it's kind of okay, but an uh, extra breather always would help. Yes, the D16A6 is done and the B18C Type R block. Yes, sir, yes, sir. All right, now on this one, we set the main bearings to 0 0.0016 on the mains. So we, ha we double checked everything from the main bearings and the main journals and have it had it micro polished and got that good so this is going to be really good all right and then the rod bearings we're going to shoot point for point zero zero eighteen so the mains are going to be point zero zero sixteen and then the rods are point zero zero eighteen so now let's go to the b18 and now on here we shot for the same it's the main bearings are point zero zero sixteen so we're going to shoot for point zero zero eighteen on the rod bearing clearances so this is going to be good. It's going to be running really good. And of course, we're going to have a, an actual video when we start building this for the final time. And of course, on the D16Z6, we also got a video of the members only section that's extremely more detailed. This is good. And all the other builds that we did here is also good. But that one has a extremely more details because, but we're trying to avoid that on the public channel because it's gonna to get too boring to, to some. Also, including the dyno videos that we have here, we also have this. A members only version video of the dyno tuning of the DC King Z6 that made 151 large power and talked about tuning extensively. And also the B16 A that we have here in the public videos, we have a members only version that talked about tuning, the cam gear adjustments and everything. And so it doesn't get too boring for the public. And of course, for you to binge watch, you can of course click here.